Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're gonna be looking at the new 10 gig switch by Ubiquity. They just released this about two weeks ago and I wanna thank Ubiquity for sending this to me to do a review and video on. The model number is the USW-Flex-XG. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You can find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks, and we have a Discord and Amazon storefront, and I'll put a link in the description below. So first, let's take a closer look at the Switch and what comes in the box. Here we have the Switch Flex XG, and I really like the riveted design that they went with for this Switch. The Switch is made out of polycarbonate. On the front, we have five ports. Port one is a one gigabit PoE in. This is meant for your uplink to get internet connection. And from ports two to five, these are our 10 gigabit RJ45 ethernet ports. We have a status light and then we have a reset button. And on the back of the switch, if you don't want to power by power over ethernet, we have a USB-C. The switch comes with a mounting bracket, a mounting bracket guide with a level on it, and a USB-C power cord. Now let's go back to the computer, go over some of the specs, and then get this adopted into our controller. Now that we've seen the switch, let's take a look at some of the specs. So this switch operates on layer two. There is no layer three features. We have one PoE in port, which is one gigabit ethernet, and then we have four 10 gigabit RJ45 ethernet ports. The total non-blocking throughput is 41 gigabits per second, and the switching capacity is 82 gigabits per second. The four 10 gigabit ethernet ports support the following speed, 100 megabits per second, one gigabit per second, 2.5 gigabits per second, five gigabits per second, and 10 gigabit per second. And I'll show you how to change the speed once we get this adopted into our controller. The Switch Flex XG is managed by our Unify network controller with a version of 6.1, dot six seven or higher and the price is 299 dollars usd msrp so let's go ahead go over to my network controller and get this adopted so i've adopted the switch into my unify controller and we can see it here the usw flex xg i'm going to click on the switch and here we could see an overview so like every other switch it's pretty much identical we could see the different colors for the different speeds so blue is 10 gigabits per second the darker shade of blue is five gigabits and then we have this other lighter blue, or maybe it's purple, I don't know, it's 2.5 gigabits per second. Green is one gigabit per second, and then amber is 10 or 100 megabits per second. If we see this gray, that means it's disconnected, and if we see that it's black, it means it's disabled. If we see the eye symbol over the port, that means the port is in mirroring, and then we have a lightning bolt that will show that it's PoE. Then if we have a circle with a line through it, that means rapid spanning tree is discarding. Under overview, we can see the name, the MAC address, the model, the version of firmware that it's running at, the IP address of the switch, the switch experience, the uptime memory usage and load average. Under uplink, we could see that we're uplinking to my office switch on port five. We could see the port number that we're connecting to on the new switch. And then we could see the speed and duplex that it's running at. We have no downlink, so nothing showing in this chart. And we have one client connected, which is my Synology NAS. Then under statistics, we could see our CPU and memory usage. Then under device, we could give it a device name. I'm gonna call it 10 GB office switch and then we'll apply the changes and that will change the name of the switch we could turn on or off the led and then we could specify if we want the switch to be using dhcp or a static ip under services we could specify the management lan if we want jumbo frames or flow control on and which type of spanning tree so we have rapid spanning tree or just spanning tree and in another video, I'm going to go over all these settings. And we could also turn on 802.1x control. Under manage, this is all the normal stuff. So we have locate, restart device, copy configuration, custom upgrade, trigger provision, download device info, debug, and forget device. If we go to debug, this will open up a terminal. Now, if we take a look under ports, we could see that port 1 and port 2 are in use. Port 1 is our uplink and it's using PoE at 1 gigabit per second. Port 2 is going to my Synology NAS at 10 gigabits per second. Now let's look into some of the port settings. So we could give each port a name which is useful for troubleshooting and then we could specify which VLAN or port profile to put it in. 
Right now it's set to all by default, but we could specify whichever other profile or VLAN we want it to sit on. We could put in a MAC filter allow list, which will only allow a specific MAC address to be able to connect to the port. And then we could do profile overrides. So the normal operating mode for each switch port is in switching. We could either have this in mirroring or aggregate if we would like. Then under link speed, this is where we would hard code the speeds if we need to. By default, it's set to auto negotiate, but we could change it from 10 gigabits per second full duplex, 5 gigabits per second full duplex, 2.5 gigabits, 1 gigabit, 100 megabits full duplex, or 100 megabits half duplex. There's no option to set 10 megabits per second. We also have port isolation, storm control, LLDP, topology change notification, enable spanning tree protocol, and then egress rate limit. Okay, now let's do some testing with this switch. On my Synology NAS, I have open speed test, and we're also gonna run an iPerf test. In my computer, I have a 10 gigabit network adapter, and I'll put a link below if you'd like to purchase one. We could see that my speed from my computer is at 10 gigabits per second. And let's go over what the topology looks like. And this is what my network looks like. At the top, we have our internet connection going into our UDM Pro. From the UDM Pro, we have a DAC cable running down to my Unify Aggregation Pro switch. From the Pro switch, we have every other switch attached to it. So my enterprise switch, and my US16 Lite PoE. The new Switch Flex XG is plugging into the Unify 16 Lite PoE, and that's giving me the one gigabit uplink to the internet. Sitting on the Switch Flex XG, we have my Synology NAS. The model number is the DS1621XS Plus. This has a 10 gigabit RJ45 Ethernet port. And then we have my computer that's also running at 10 gigabit. So now let's open up speed test and see what results we're getting. Now we're on the open speed test site. Let's press start and see the speeds that we're getting. All right, so our download speed was fairly low. We're only getting 3,910.8 megabits per second. We may have to do some other configurations. Could be a bad cable as well. Our upload is 8,245.0 megabits per second, which looks a little bit more reasonable. Next test we're going to do is an iPerf test. I have iPerf running on my Synology NAS as the server, and we're going to use this computer as the client. So now we'll run the iPerf command and see what type of speeds we're getting. Okay, that looks a lot better. We're getting 7.52 gigabits per second. We may be able to bump that up by enabling jumbo frames on my computer, on the Synology NAS, and on my switches, but that will be done in a later video. All in all, I think this is a great switch if you're just looking for a few 10 gigabit ports. It's at a reasonable price and could all be managed within our Unify network controller. If you have any questions about this switch, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.